All right, we're on page 133, and the objective will be to explain what the Intel manual says about this SSE4 instruction edition, or they call it extensions. Well, anyways, with these, um, they introduce 54 new instructions. Now, 47 of these instructions are referred to as SSE 4.1, and in this document, seven new SSE4 instructions will be referred to as 4.2. Why don't they just stick with the pattern of calling it uh, supplemental SSE4 instructions like they did with SSE3? Well, that's a question only Intel can answer, so we'll go ahead and not write that one up. Let's begin. So these 4.1 instructions are targeted to improve the performance of media, imaging, and 3D workloads. SSE 4.1 adds instructions that improve compiler vectorization and significantly increase support for packed D-word computation. Well, that sounds pretty complicated. So the first question is, what do SSE 4.1 instructions seek to improve? And a logical follow-up is what is the difference between 4.1 and 4.2. And so here, if you answer by saying media, imaging, and 3D workloads, you'll get that correct. For the second one, if you say 4.2 uh, seeks to improve compiler vectorization, that's pretty good. And then to make it even better, this will significantly increase support for packed D word computation. Now this next sentence is kind of strange to me. It says the technology also provides a hint that can improve memory throughput when reading from uncacheable WC memory type. We will, we will, or I will need some outside help to understand that sentence. That's for another video though. So let's get going. We'll have two instructions to perform to packed D word multiplies. We'll have two instructions perform f performing floating point dot products with input output selects. One lonely instruction will perform a load with a streaming hint. Six instructions will simplify packed blending. So what is packed blending? Eight instructions expand support for packed integer min and max. Four instructions support floating point round with selectable rounding mode and precision exception override. I'm making a leap here thinking that um, this is a good idea because precision exceptions happen probably very often. That is when you are dividing numbers, floating point numbers especially. But next up we'll have seven instructions to improve data insertion and extraction from the XMM registers. Twelve instructions improve packed integer format conversions, and this is a sign and zero extension area, I guess, we'll be reading about. My earlier videos went into what that means. Um, one instruction will improve SAD, not the emotion, but some absolute difference. It'll improve SAD generation for small block sizes. So make sure we're on the same page. What does SAD stand for? Some absolute difference. And to finish off this 4.1 section, we will have four single instructions for adding horizontal searching operations, masked comparisons, adding keyword packed equality comparisons, and adding D word packing with unsigned saturation. So all this stuff really good for media related um, computing, remember? But here is more for compiler vectorizations. We have a string and text processing that can take advantage of um, SIMD programming techniques. And I just note that this seems rare. The compiler would find use for this, but maybe I'm wrong. In this set, there is also an instruction that enhances the capability of 128-bit uh, integer SIMD capability. That's redundant. Enhances the capability of this capability. So my question here is what do the two 4.2 instructions relate to? I would say something like string and text and integer or maybe 128-bit integers. So let's dive into our first instruction here. Ah, we're going to do an overview apparently and then we'll dive into our first two instructions. The overview is that these 4.1 SSE 4.1, of course, instructions can use an XMM register as a source or destination. Programming with these extensions is similar to programming with 128-bit integer SIMD and floating point SIMD instructions in all the previous SSE um, extensions. But 4.1 does not provide any 64-bit integer instructions operating on the MMX registers. 
So which registers will SSE 4.1 not work with? And the answer is the old MMX ones. No, they're not very old, I guess, um, but they're older than the XMM register up here. All right, so to do a D word multiply, you can type PMOLD or PMULLD. This will return four lower 32 bits of the 64 bit results of signed 32 bit integer multiplies. Now, pull me DQ will return to 64 bit signed results of signed 32 bit integer multiplies. So what's the difference between Pomo D and Pomo DQ? I would say something like the first one will return four 32-bit chunks, while the second one re will return just two 64-bit chunks. Okay, floating point dot product instructions. This is DPPD and DPPS. Uh, the difference between the two will be double precision relating to dot products of two elements and a broadcast, and then the PS is single precision dot products. Um, for up to four elements and broadcasts. That's weird. Usually uh, Intel talks about single precision before double precision. They kind of have that backwards right there. Well, anyways, the next one is streaming load hint instructions. Oh, I'm, I've been waiting to read this. Like, what is a hint? Well, this provides non-temporal hint that can cause adjacent 16-bit items within an, un, within an aligned 64-bit re byte region apparently called a streaming line, to be fetched and held in a small set of temporary buffers, called streaming load buffers, subsequent streaming loads to other uh, aligned 16-byte uh, items in the same streaming line may be supplied from the streaming load buffer and can improve throughput. Maybe I can ask what are keywords you can pull out of the hint instruction? That's kind of funny, I'm asking for hints about um, a hint. I might say something like uh, keywords such as streaming line or streaming load buffers. I mean, this is good stuff to Google after the word stack uh, overflow. But let's move on to section 4104. We have a lot of packed blending instructions. So everything says the word blend, but it's the last part that's different. You got a D, S, D, S, B, and W. So we're just moving around from double precision, single precision concepts. We're moving around byte and then word concepts. I'll let you read this section on your own, but it's all about just copying data f from one place to another and sometimes using what's called an implied mask. Now moving down to packed integer min and maxes, that's so straightforward I'll skip that as well, but there's eight, eight of these instructions. The one goes on to the other page down here. Let's quickly get to uh, floating point round instructions with selectable rounding mode. That was kind of confusing to me. Apparently you can control the way individual numbers are rounded by using these instructions. And I tried for a joke right here by saying this is not your father's x86 type of rounding where you just select a rounding mode and it works. But the way they describe rounding here is a little unique. It says round packed single precision floating point values into integer values and return rounded floating point values. That is very tricky and strange to me. So I asked how does rounding work with FP round instructions and you could say something like um, rounding would take a floating point and turn it into an integer then round it and then turn it back into a floating point. So visual learners it looks something like this and I do not understand the logic behind that. Now the rest of these instructions are similar except like this one will be uh, for double precision instead. This one will deal with just the low packed precision floating point value and this is the low packed double precision value. So there you go, four instructions regarding that. The next set is insertion and, and extractions from XMM registers. And this whole area will get into general purpose registers, so I called them our old friends. But it's all about moving things from the XMM register to the general purpose ones, whether you're inserting or extracting. And that's the summary of this uh, section. So a good question is what registers will extract and insert SSE 4.1 instructions work with? And the answer is uh, XMM and general purpose registers. Well, our next section is all about packed integer format conversions. So here's all the conversion ones. And you can see here, it's a lot of sign extending or zero extending. And maybe this is an impossibility, but I asked what happens if you don't specify a type of extension? 
I'm just curious if that's possible, and if it is, then how would the processor react? Oh boy, and there's even more of these than I thought. Well, as promised above, our last four single instructions, well, it looks like there's five of them. Okay, so there's five sections with five very unique instructions for each section. Uh, this one is about improved sums of absolute values, specifically for four byte blocks. We have a horizontal search here, so uh, we're up to 10 letters in this instruction. Horizontal search finds the value and location of the minimum unsigned word from one of eight horizontally packed unsigned words. The resulting value and location, that is the offset within the source, are packed into the low D word of the destination XMM register. So cool, we have a search instruction. We have a test instruction, P test performs a logical AND between the destination with this mask and sets the ZF flag if the result is zero. The carry flag uh, zero for test is set if the inverted mask ANDed with the destination is all zeros. Okay, that's broken English on their part. Okay, that actually makes sense if you read it correctly like I did not. It says the ZF flag is set if the inverted mask ANDed with the destination is all zeros. And our final two. Um, packed keyword equality comparisons and D word packing with unsigned saturation. So this instruction packs D word to word with unsigned saturation. That's that's a first for Intel to actually use the instruction in the description after already writing the instruction. Maybe they're kind of like me and just really exhausted at this point. Well, that's it for this video. The next one's going to be super short, but I just don't want to combine it into uh, SSE 4.1.